Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I'm in this 2015 Sangyong Corando Sports pickup truck. I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking that I've lost the plot completely, but let me just explain. I bought this truck about eight weeks ago. I bought it directly from a local Sangyong main dealer. The previous owner bought a brand new one and traded this in. And to be honest, I didn't know anything about them. But one thing I've learned with this job is you've got to keep buying every single day, even when you don't want to. Even when it goes quiet on the sales front, keep buying stock. Because eventually it will pick up. The more cars you have, the more cars you'll sell, the more money you'll make. It's just a numbers game, basically. But I've never been one of those car dealers who's thought, uh, what is it, a, a Sangyong Karan? Uh, no, thanks, I think I'll leave. What colour is it? No, I'll leave it, thanks. Just say yes to everything that's offered. I promise you, you will earn more money that way. But, and this is a big but, it seems on this occasion I've been tripped up by my own theory. Because I've had this, like I say, for eight weeks, maybe ten weeks, and I've not had a single inquiry. Not a single solitary email, phone call, nothing at all. To make matters worse, as if to rub salt in my wounds, I've got to look at this colossal Korean carbuncle every day. I know why I've not had any interest in it. It's quite simple, really. There are a number of reasons. Firstly, nobody has ever heard of it, and I've taken a bit of a risk by filming with it because I'll probably only get 1,200 views. In some markets, it's called an Actian sport. I'm still none the wiser. It's a bit like when you go to Lidl or Aldi and you start seeing things like Manhattan spreadable cheese instead of Philadelphia. Sangyong have been around in the UK for most of my life, and they offer five-year warranties, but still, nobody's ever heard of them. In fact, that's not true. They are famous, or, or infamous, for making the ugliest car ever made, the Rodius, which looks like three cars which have been haphazardly welded together. It's the Frankenstein's monster of cars. Now, the second reason I think I've had no interest in it is, well, look at the state of it. It's absolutely hideous. It's certainly the ugliest car I've ever bought. I mean, from the front, I suppose it's not too bad, but from every other angle, it's just atrocious. The sides of the rear cargo area are way too tall, which just makes the whole thing look off balance. The rear is, is an ugly devil, it really is. There are just too many shapes and lines and too much styling, none of it works. It's as if it's been designed by a large team of people, all of whom have never met, and who probably don't like one another. Right, okay, you design the front, uh, you design the back, you can do the sides, you can do the badging, Right, and when you're all done, just email your designs over to the factory and they'll knock it out. Well, uh, do you not want to make sure that it forms some sort of cohesive design? No, not really, no. Just crack on with it. Whilst I'm in the mood for completely ripping this car apart, let's move on to the interior, shall we? I don't even know where to start. In fact, yes I do. Look at the state of this clock. Who has designed that? It's a terrible piece of design. They've clearly run out of space for a decent clock, so they've just shoved that there. It's just an afterthought. The person that signed that design off clearly has a white stick and a Labrador. The plastics are such poor quality. They make a Kinder Egg look like a Fabergé. And the materials they've used to cover the seats, well, it sort of feels like I'm sat in an American diner from the 50s. They've even stitched the word sports into the back of the seats. I've a good mind to sue Sangyong, or Dong Bang as they were known in the 50s. I've a good mind to sue them under the Trade Description Act because the last thing this thing is, is sporty. Under the bonnet is a 2-litre turbo diesel, which even Lada would have dismissed for being a little bit too coarse. It produces 153 horsepower, which is about 50 fewer than you'd like. Its 0 to 60 time is best measured using a sundial. Now onto the ride, it's a well-known fact that all pickup trucks ride like garbage. They're so bouncy and antiquated, it's like being sat in a, in a horse-drawn carriage. But the Corando Sports is in a different league. It's sublime, if, of course, you're only comparing it with a rickshaw. This monstrosity was released in 2012 and it ran until 2016 when they replaced it with the, and you won't believe this, the even worse, even uglier Musso, which I think is short for Mussolini, because it's about as popular. Anyway, enough of all the negativity, I've got to try and flog this croc. So, should we try and put a positive spin on it? Right, so I've got my work cut out here. First and foremost, and let's be honest, the only reason you'd even consider buying one of these Sangyongs is the price. It is dirt cheap. It's so cheap, in fact. Well, the cost of one of these used is about two-fifths of what a Toyota Hilux would cost you. So when you consider the price, mm, it actually starts to make a little bit of sense. This one, for example, has just had its fifth birthday. And it's quite a high-spec model. It's got loads of optional extras. And the retail price is just seven and a half grand. Now, a similarly specced Hilux, an Invincible X, for example, will set you back two and a half times more than that. Even a Nissan Navara will cost you double, and as we all know, they snap in half. 
2015 onwards models have a payload of over one ton, which is quite impressive, and it can tow up to 2.3 tons. The rear bed is big enough and wide enough to take a standard pallet, and the six-speed gearbox isn't bad either. Yes, the interior looks cheap and nasty, but you get loads of extras. I've got heated seats, I've got powerful mirrors, I've got heated mirrors, I've got heated screen wash, I've got aircon, you can connect your phone, I've got USB and auxiliary inputs, you get electric seats. Another good thing is all the buttons and switches are big and clumsy, which means you can operate them easily even if you're wearing gloves. In the rear you get enough headroom, enough legroom, unless you're a point guard of course, but for an average size adult there's actually quite a bit of space back there. The two outer seats have Isofix points too. The steering is very light so it's easy to operate, the turning circle is quite impressive unlike a lot of pickup trucks I've driven, and it's not bad on fuel either. Around town you'll average 26 miles per gallon, on a motorway run you'll average 36 miles per gallon. So quite a frugal thing. There's not a dangerous amount of body roll, and the rear suspension setup is quite clever. It uses coil springs rather than the traditional leaf spring setup, a bit like a new shaped Navara. The power is sent directly to the rear wheels, but if you flick this switch here, then it turns into a four-wheel drive, which is perfect if you work on a quarry or you're a farmer or you're working on a building site. Actually quite useful. That also means while you're driving along just in two-wheel drive, it's slightly better on fuel. Another positive to mention is parts are available everywhere, they're stocked by pretty much everybody, and they're quite cheap. They're not difficult or expensive to service either. Sangyong have even aimed to have a Sangyong dealership within 30 minutes drive of every UK customer. Reliability-wise, they've got very good reviews. Sangyong put a five-year warranty on them from you, which has no mileage restraints. So you could do 200,000 miles in those five years, and it would still be covered by Sangyong warranty. So they're obviously quite confident with the product, even if I'm not. As I mentioned in my Great Wall pickup truck video, if I were in the market for a pickup truck for myself that I had to drive every single day, then I'd go all out, I'd push the boat out and buy a Toyota Hilux Invincible X with an automatic transmission. But if I were the company boss and I just had to buy a pickup truck for a member of staff, knowing full well that they would smoke in it, use and abuse it, then the Sangyong starts to make a lot of sense. Don't forget you could buy two of these for two members of staff for the same price as one Hilux. In the words of Shrek, That'll do, donkey, that'll do. And if you can make sure you only look at it from the front, and perhaps your spectacles are dirty, or better still, you've got cataracts, then they're not that bad, I suppose. So there we go. Now you all know what a Sangyong Corando Sport pickup truck is. You're welcome. Somebody buy it, for Christ's sake. Thanks once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys, I'll see you next time.